of sinners Jesus will save all he has promised that will he do sprinkle your soul in the blood of the lamb and he will pass will pass over you oh when I see the blood when I see the blood when Faith, faith, 
Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Lord, I'll never forget, no, never. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Lord, I'll never forget, no, never. How many never will forget the night or the day you gave your life to the Lord? You bent your knee, hallelujah. Marching through the land, deliverance is the song. They've got healing in their hands. There's everlasting joy and gladness in their heart. And in this army, I've got a part. Oh, God's got an army. Marching through the land, deliverance is their song. They've got healing in their hands. There's everlasting joy and gladness in their heart. And in this army, I've got a part. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Leave it there. Leave it there.
when you run into the name of Jesus. You're saved tonight when you call on the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. He is my refuge. He is my fortress. He is my strength. He's my healer tonight. He's your provider. Hallelujah. Praise God. They ran to the top of the tower. But on the way up to the top of the tower, there was a little woman. And she took a little piece of millstone, as much as she could carry. And she went up. What's that millstone? That rock. That rock is Jesus. She carried as much as she could. And she went to the top of that tower. You know, the higher you go up in prayer and in the spirit, the more impact you're going to have. Hallelujah. When you look down, when you go up higher, you look down, those problems don't look any bigger. They look smaller. Hallelujah. The higher you climb up with the name of Jesus in the tower of prayer, amen, your problems get smaller. They're getting smaller right now. Hallelujah. The Lord is a strong tower. Hallelujah. All of a sudden, she took that little piece of millstone. There was that enemy, that old slew foot, that old devil, that old problem. And she said, here goes, in the name of Jesus. Woo! And she dropped that piece of stone. She dropped the name of Jesus on that enemy. Hallelujah. And it all but crushed his head. All but crushed. And he looked up and the... He was dying, and he looks up, and he said, who did that to me? And he said, oh, it was a woman. <laughs> Don't ever, he said to his armor bearer, don't ever let it be said that a woman destroyed me. I want to tell you, you're the church. You're the woman. Hallelujah. You're the bride of Christ. And we are defeating the enemy. Hallelujah. Woo. Mighty God. He's our rock. Anyways, he was destroyed. And that devil, that thing that's tormenting you is being destroyed tonight too. Amen? Praise the Lord. You about ready? <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's give Brother Freddie a great hand tonight. Working hard, playing the organ. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Heavenly Father. What a mighty God we serve. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm already a bath of sweat. When you have to play a monster that takes two hands and two feet plus your brain, it can wear you down. I'm thinking about what Sylvia said. Velocity. The higher you get, the harder the stone falls. If you're not too high tonight, you won't have much of an impact. How much getting high? I'm getting high. I'm addicted to Christ. That's what Paul said. The higher you get up on the top of this tower, then turn loose. <laughs> the farther down it goes, the faster it goes, and the more impact it's got, and you will squash your enemy. Abimelech, at the bottom of the tower, who was hard against the wall, trying to burn down the tower. You know, you need to be sober and vigilant for your adversary, the devil, like a roaring lion, is walking about seeking whom he may devour. Sorry, devil, there's nobody around here you can devour tonight. Walk on. Sneak on. Keep roaring somewhere, but you won't be roaring here. We got a hedge. We got a fence. We got a wall. We got a host of angels. Consider his bed, which is Solomon's. Sixty mighty men are standing around it all night long with drawn swords of the villain of Israel, and they know how to use the sword. Why? Because of fear on the night. 
I promise you tonight you're going to get rid of your fear. Did you know the fearful and the unbelieving are the first two going to hell? Read Revelation 21.8. But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars we better send that one up to Washington. <laughs> Shall have their part in the lake of fire that burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Yes. So we're getting rid of fear tonight, and depression is going to leave tonight too, depression. <laughs> they told me this was a democratic state. The Democrats are running it. No wonder you're under depression. So it don't matter, though, tonight if you're a Democrat or a, an aristocrat or an alley rat. All fear and depression is going to leave, even if you're a Republican or a Publican, still going to leave. Hallelujah. Well, I'm catching my second wind. That's good. I'm calling the pastor to come up here now. It's is portion of the service to let you know who pastors this church and who opened these grounds so that we could have a 20-acre tent revival right here. None other than Brother Rick Strawcutter, the greatest Bible teacher on 9.3 radio in Adrian, Michigan. He's too kind. Almighty Father, in the name of Jesus, we are gathered together tonight one mind, one accord, in one place. Oh, Lord God, thank you, Jesus, for the cool breeze that sweeps through here. People would think it's too hot to go to church. They're wrong, because you supply every need in the name of the Lord. The anointing is here. It's flowing like a river, and we're, we're just thankful for it. We're thankful that your promises are true. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thank you, Brother Strawcutter. Now, when this tent's over with, there's still going to be a church right there. Make sure you get there. And don't just dash in and get your miracle and never be seen again. Because if you do that, you love to get sick again. And then you'll know where you have to come back to to get healed again. See, God knows how to keep you in church. As a matter of fact, if you just stay in church in the first place, you probably wouldn't get sick. Hey, I like that. Assemble yourselves together much more so as you see the day approaching. Assemble with people of like precious faith. Yeah, yeah, you see us doing something different tonight, don't you? Well, this is very necessary on a Saturday night because this is hoot and annie, hoot and holler night, Saturday night. And uh, when I first talked to Brother Strawcutter, he wanted to have a bluegrass festival here for one day. I said, you're thinking too small. <laughs> Let's put up a big tent for 10 nights, and we don't have any bluegrass pickers with us anyhow. All the kids are here, there, and everywhere, but they were a That's great it. bluegrass picking family, I'll tell you that, when they were together. That's it. Okay. Uh, I can never remember that tent boy's name. What? Philip. <laughs> Philip. Philip. Uh, Mama's base is dead. You want to put a little juice on it. Now, what you're going to see now is one-third of a bluegrass band. And this is strictly for Brother Strawcutter, who insisted on the bluegrass. Is this one alive? Is this one alive? Oh, yeah. 
in the actual family band. Mama uh, has only been playing the bass recently, Testing. last few years. Yeah. Our boy, number two, played the bass. He played it with gloves. We always introduced him as the world's first glove-wearing bass fiddlers. Tell I'm just stalling for now. Almost hate to do this without a good band behind me. But we're going to do it with two pieces. There's the other four pieces are a fiddle and a banjo and a mandolin and a dobro. That's the six pieces of the bluegrass band. So, Well, let's go back, Mama, to our roots. You want to do that? work into it. You, you go ahead first. In honor of preferring one another. Like the hearse is too low. You mark down the gravel road, I can see the brown old home. A tribute to a way of life that's almost come and gone. The roots of my race have run deep. I've come back for the strength that I need. And home. I pulled into the highway, the driveway, through the open door, it was good to be there. And through the open door, I saw that Dad was asleep in his favorite chair. And in his hand, he held that big old Bible, and I remember how much he gave. So I pulled away and didn't want to wake him, spoil his dreams of this next crusade. A Christian mom who had the strength of life the way she did. Who would pull that apron off, lay those scriptures on her skin. Dad, a quiet man whose gentle voice was seldom heard. Who could borrow money at the bank simply on his word. The roots of my brains are deep. I come back for the strength that I need. And hope comes no matter how far down I see. The roots of my brains are deep. The roots of my brains are deep. That was different. Our roots go back a long way. Our family, the Clark family, why, uh, we are actually, boy, I don't know. You, you were the fourth generation, don't we? Fourth generation of Pentecost. My, my great-grandmother received the Holy Ghost in 1911 at home. Not to be outdone, my uh, great-grandfather got in a horse and a sleigh in the dead of winter in northern Maine and traveled 40 miles to Washburn where a crazy woman had a tent meeting going. <laughs> the crazy woman was Amy Semple McPherson. I don't know if you ever remember hearing tell of her or not. But she had a tent up in the snow and uh, he went and said, I'm not coming home till I get the Holy Ghost. 
came home a day early, and they could tell by the jingle bells on the horses that old Grampy John had the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Then, that was in 1917, the year my father was born, and then uh, my grandparents received, and my parents, and we did, and our 11 children, and our grandchildren are sixth generation, I would say, if I can count them straight. That's our roots. Had the Holy Ghost a long time, and we're not giving it up. In fact, we're going to exercise it right here tonight. Hallelujah. Here's an old one. We got this from the Lubin brothers back when I was a kid. There I'm calling names that you'll never know until you get to heaven. Born again, free from sin, and now I'm happy night and day. Flames we shout, and there's no doubt, now I'm born, born again. Satan told me that I only thought I got saved, tells me what a fool I have been. Then my mind goes back to that old bench where I pray. Now I know I'm born again. Born again, free from sin, and now I'm happy night and day. Makes me shout. In most magazines, feature new styling, on fit to be seen. Their place called the newsstand, so children can buy. When they grow wrong, do we wonder why? If we forget God, His mercy will. And sin will cover the land and the sea. If we forget God, Satan will rule. If we forget God, our nation is doomed. If you look on. My family with pity Wonder how we have struggled so long Then your eyes can't see All my riches No, thank God For my Christian home When I'm sad and discouraged from failure I feel the whole world is against me and everything's wrong all I need for courage is to whisper thank God for my Christian home I'll this old world like I found it taking with me no silver or gold for oh, the strong and the dead has not power to break the circle of my Christian home when I'm sad and discouraged from failure I feel the whole world is against me and everything's wrong all I need for courage is to whisper thank God for my
Mom and Dad love him so dearly. Brush Harbor's by the side of the road where I learned about salvation from the book of Revelation in an arbor by the side of the road. Oh, Brush Harbor's by the side of the road where a sinner could lay down his heavy load. It was in those old Brush Harbor troubled souls found peaceful harbor in an arbor by the side of the road. Many times I have departed from the way of life I started in that arbor by the side of the road. But each time the devil caught me, I remember what they taught me in the arbor by the side of the road. Oh, Brush Harbor's by the side of the road Where the mighty light of God's great mercy shows They were praying, shouting, singing Till the countryside was ringing And the blue and white tent by the side of the road Let's do just a couple verses of one last song. If you're enjoying the uh, limited bluegrass picking and singing here tonight. <laughs> we miss our kids. They really do top this, it off. <laughs> is this by special request? Who requested it? Me. I think she'll I, recognize it if she hears the I first few words. I think it was a couple words. days ago he requested the one ago. <clears throat> this is the way, the old-fashioned way of getting saved. How many wants to hear about it? <laughs> At first when I heard of some people who claim that old-time religion was real, I said I'll go down. Take a look at the crowd It's just as weak-minded I feel Well, I walked up the steps And I peeked in the door The devil said, don't you go in I said, it can't hurt me I'll just step inside And I'll sit as far back as I can But something got a hold of me Thank God, something, something got a hold of me. Yeah, I went there to fight, but I'll tell you that night, God surely got a hold of me. Sitting in my seat, just a thinking that old. When they all started to pray, why the glory rolled from glory, and I rolled on the floor. 
And I prayed there till God had his way. Now just about then someone started to shout. He said that he knew he was saved. And all plainly could see with no reason to doubt. Salvation to him the Lord gave. Now just about then that old preacher he preached, brother. Looked down the aisle straight at me. Why he told everybody how mean that I was. Didn't talk like he thought much of me. Yet I sit in my seat thinking that or again. Then they all started to pray. Happened again. The power fell from heaven, prayed through on the floor. I prayed there till God had his way. Come on, Mama. But something had a hold of me. Yes, it did. Something had a hold of me. I went there to fight. But I'll tell you that night, God surely got a hold of me. And now that I know that I won't need to doubt, I got an experience that night. I'll never forget it as long as I live. I found out salvation was right. I said when I went, I can't stay very long. I must be home by nine. Well, the glory rolled from glory, prayed through on the floor. I got home at three and felt fine. Just something had a hold of me. Something had a hold of me. Yeah, I went there to fight, to put up one fight. Something got a hold of me. You know what? Penny cost satisfies me. Penny cost satisfies me. Got the Holy Ghost and fire, and it's my heart's desire. Penny cost satisfies me. And this is like heaven to me. This is like heaven to me. I've crossed over Jordan to Canaan's fair land, and this is like heaven to me. And Pentecost satisfies me, and something's still hanging on to me. Well, something's got a hold of me, all right. I was going to lean on you folks for health, strength, and longevity. <laughs> well, we've been having a pretty good night each night. We started Thursday. Right, this is the third night. In fact, this is the third tent crusade this year. All in lockdown states. Didn't stop us, though. We just went and had a Holy Ghost time just the same. That's because we're not, uh, we don't live in a government. We, we live in the kingdom. Did you see the kingdom of God here tonight? Well, that's amazing because it's invisible. Yet, the kingdom of God is within you. It's in men's hearts. One day the kingdom of God is going to be translated to the kingdom of heaven. In my father's house is many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But 
told you, so it must be so. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, ye may be also. God's word can't lie. You're going to another world. You earthlings are going to leave this planet. We might find a few things out tonight in the word about the future of this earth. It's past, present, and future. But while we're on it, we've got to make the most of it. Have you told somebody today about the revival? Raise your hand. Could you pray somebody through today? Different show of hands. Hallelujah. Who fasted today a meal for tonight? How many has received a miracle in the last two nights in this tent? Just stand on your feet if you got a miracle. Let's just see you. Stay right up there. Let me count heads. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You had four miracles. I got six. That's, that's like I preached the other night, 153 great fish, which are great miracles. They weren't there a minute ago, but here they was. Created miracles. And then someone said, you mean you're going to have 153 miracles tonight? I said, yep. Yeah. And they said, there's only 50 people here. I said, well, they're all, they're all going to get three, three miracles apiece. Just add them up. <laughs> Let me do that again. There's a five. 40 miracles that came back. Were there not 10 cleansed? Where are the nine? There's nobody came back to give God the glory but this Samaritan here, but uh, uh, there were nine, there were 10 cleansed, but this man who came back to bring his testimony and give God the glory is made whole, made every whit whole, which is different than being cleansed. I'm glad you're cleansed, but you could also be made whole. Because if you're missing anything in your body, you're not whole. If you're missing a finger, you're not whole. If you're missing a toe, you're not whole. I think I'll go back to church and give God the glory. There might be something I need to have made whole. Hallelujah. All right. I want to recognize the uh, main fellows around here that does the hard work, and Al Smith is with us, he's our tent manager, he's going to come down tonight and greet us, and then we'll hear from the rest of the crew here. Whew. Now while he's exhorting you, because he's had all these hours to work on this tent, to just meditate on the message that he's going to lay on you tonight. Praise the Lord. Today was kind of a day of rest. It felt good. After I got strung up about three times over there last night, I went home and slept the best I've slept in months. God's changing things. He's doing things. We had a pretty good time out here this morning, almost too much, but it was, it was a pretty good tent set up over there in the corner. With some pretty good stuff, but, um, you know, God always gives us a little nugget somewhere that we're at. He doesn't expect us to never have anything, but there was a guy that didn't have anything, and he was going up to the temple, and he met a guy that had been withered up since birth for 40 years, and he said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. Give I thee. And what do we have tonight that's common among all of us? We have Jesus. Amen. And if he's in us, we should have some kind of a power source in us. That when we come up against an obstacle, when we come up against something, and it popped out at me this morning. I got blessed a little bit. We was all in the dining hall there this afternoon, and there's all these guys in there chatting, and they all got their Bibles out. 
It was all looking for something. And the world's like that. They're looking for something. They just don't know what they're looking for. But we need to be charged up and ready and have something to give to them when they need it. If the batteries run dead, it's not going to boost them. But you get a full charged battery, and you might give somebody the boost they need to make it to the next step in the road. And Peter said to him, rise up in the name of Jesus Christ. Didn't stop there. He took him by the right hand and he lifted him up. And it said, never seen it quite this way before. Strength came immediately to his ankles and his feet. Didn't take forever. It was immediately. If you need something immediately tonight, God is here to meet you. We didn't set this thing up to be powerless. We want it to be so powerful that the flames go up off the top of it and the whole town sees it. We want something to start here in Adrian that's going to keep on burning and keep on going long after we're gone. We've got to get your pastor to think big because he's got a big building that needs a lot of work, but it'll fit a whole lot of people. A whole lot of people that are destitute, Desperate, they need something from God. They're living in dark places, and they need help to come out. It's everywhere we go, we see it. But the only one that's going to do it is us. And God wants to use you, because we're his hands and feet on this earth, to take somebody by the right hand and lift them up and give them a boost. I guess I'll call my wife up here. She's the powerhouse behind the scenes. And when her and Sister Sylvia get together, th there's no devil going to get anywhere near them because <laughs> they know how to pray the house down. Hallelujah. Oh, I love Jesus tonight. I love him every night. Hallelujah. I want to tell you something. That when you start knowing who you are in Jesus, the devil might as well give up. Because Jesus took back the keys, and if you're willing, he gave you back the dominion. And God has given us weapons for our warfare. Can I share a testimony, Brother Freddie? When I first got saved in 1974, no, let me see. 78, February of 1978. I was green as they come. I came out of a um, denominational church. I knew there was a devil, but I didn't realize that there were demons and evil spirits doing his thing for him. And when I first got saved, I was vexed by a spirit of fear. And I was tormented. And I told the students in our home, our, our um, fellowship group on campus at college, this is what's going on. And they said, Monique, take this scripture, write it down on poster board, paste it above your bed, and say it in the morning. Say it at night. Say it at noontime. And that scripture was, greater is he that is in me than he who is in the world. Repeat after me. Greater is he that is in me than he who is in the world. And that evil spirit left. And what I have learned is when you take the word of God, it's like taking a vitamin. It's like taking food for your physical body, but the Word of God feeds your spirit. The Word of God feeds your soul, and when you feed on the Word of God, you've got that sword to take down the devil in Jesus' name. Powerful, Sister Monique. Sometimes I call Sister Monique Sister Unique. And uh, each of her dissertations are unique. We're looking for uh, the tent boy to come down here.
And uh, when he finishes his long-winded testimony, he go turn the sound microphones off because he's got lots of jobs to do and he don't have a lot of help. But we're looking for more tent boys, aren't we, Philip? That would be sure. He praying hard. He fasts and prays. You know this boy. He fasted three days to be allowed to come on this trip and uh, go with this. Uh, team this summer, three days, and I think you're still fasting, but this today you're fasting for more tent boy help, ain't you? I thought so. No hiding place down here. It ain't safe to think around here, you know. All right, Philip. Greet him. Hello. I was thinking the other day of home, and something my mother always said, she'd quote the scripture that I think it's from Psalms, sing unto the Lord a new song. But she'd always say, she was very big on worshiping and praising the Lord. She'd always say, you don't have to have a good voice, though. He wants you to sing no matter how well you sing. Just sing unto him and give him the glory. Well, Philip, that sounds like me. I made a joyful noise unto the Lord tonight. <laughs> I, understand, I know it was a noise, but I believe God accepted it. Uh, we're a asking our evangelism director, who's part of this team, to come this way. And uh, he's a, a powerhouse for God, too, that travels with us. His name is Mike Sweeney. Make him welcome. Thank you, thank you again, thank you again. Um, the, the Lord speaks to me actually in very small, short phrases, and one word things mean a lot. I, the, the, the thing that we need to understand is that obedience is what the Lord expects of us. If you don't have obedience, the rest of it doesn't really matter. You've got to remember to be obedient to the Lord, and that's in everything. He expects that. I always uh, go back to the simple things. Uh, I love the Sermon on the Mount. And the Lord gives us a starting place because some people come here and they want to get started. Well, he tells you where to start. He says, seek first the kingdom of God and my righteousness. Well, that's where you start. And if you seek it and you seek it with all your heart, he says, you'll find him. And that's what you do. Thank you, Brother Mike. Now, you notice uh, I learn by example, which is why I'm sitting in this chair. I didn't know you folks felt so good. But this is not just any chair. This is a healing chair that was given to me in Moncton, New Brunswick last year. And the whole congregation signed the seat of it underneath this chair. They signed their names. It seems like around 10 o'clock every night I've had to go to this chair to pray for the sick. So that's why I call it the healing chair. I'm going to get up off of it in a minute, though. It's not 10 o'clock yet. And if you stay here the morning, it'd only be because God would be doing signs and wonders and miracles, and you won't want to miss nothing. Hallelujah. So uh, years ago, I used to go to Oral Roberts' tent meetings in the 60s, 60, 1966. I was in the last one. And it was in Laurel, Maryland. Laurel, Maryland on the racetrack. It, uh, there was an invalid tent behind the big tent. Of course, back in those days, they had, they had segregation. You know, they had a rope break down to the middle of the tent <laughs> for the whites and the blacks and we don't do that no more. And I'm just praying you folks will bring some blacks out to this meeting because they need to get healed and saved and delivered just like you. And we're not racist around here. We want them here. You can tell them they're welcome. Anyway, that was back then. But he would take me with him to, he took me with him to the uh, invalid tent, just he and I. And we prayed for invalids for a while, and then we came back into the meeting, and they were doing something else in the big tent. 
until we got back. And then they had the prayer line. It looked like it went on for half a mile. And uh, I won't say how many things I saw happen because it seemed like it was in the waning days of that ministry, but there were things that happened. And he always told us, he said, now, boys, if you'll sit down when you pray for the sick, you will prolong your ministry. I said, well, now, I'll never do that. And lo and behold, they gave me this healing chair. And at 10 o'clock, I find myself staggering over to it. But I'm not staggering now. I got my third wind. Open up your Bibles tonight to 2 Peter, chapter 3. We've got to have a message of the hour. Say it. Hallelujah. Well, you do want God to have something to confirm, don't you? Do you expect us to come here and just operate in the gifts of the Spirit and not preach? Well, that would be just like a chicken with one wing flying in circles. Back home on the farm, we clipped the old hen's wings so she couldn't fly out of the hen pen. Now, if I just came here and preached, like a lot of folks might do, I'd be the chicken with the other wing flying in the opposite circle. But if I preach and demonstrate, if I have word and deed, I will have balance, which is the key word to the English language, and I'll let this old chicken fly. So how many wants both wings tonight? Well, here's the first one. And who knows, we may only preach between the miracles, but let's just see how much strength God gives us. What do you say? Okay, I'm going to have Brother Strawcutter help me here. I'm going to start with the third verse in a minute. I... Sit down and holler it out if I miss, okay? If I don't quote this, I get back up. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 3. Knowing this first, is that where you are? All right, here we go. Knowing this first, that in the last days there should be scoffers, walking and talking and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they are. Where's the promise of his coming? And this they willingly are ignorant of, by, that by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire, against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief of the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Mm. Seeing then, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Say that with me. The earth and all that is therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner a person ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? 
Amen. Am I right so far? Looking for and hasting on to the great day of God, where in the heavens beyond, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. And there you have it. Now, I want to quote the first part of the Bible before I say anything else, and that is, of course, Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. If you ever want to know where to start, start at the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. That's kind of like John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning, the Word was made flesh. In the beginning was the Word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. So we're in the beginning. So in Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, uh, it tells us in the beginning, God made the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness lay upon the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light, and there was light, and he, God said, it's good, and I'm going to call the light day, and I'm going to call the darkness night. Down in the ninth chapter, he said, and on the third day of recreation, he said, and let the dry land appear out of the water, and he called the dry land earth, and he called the water seas. Okay, that's the end of my quote. Now let's go ahead with the, the message. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word tonight. Let it be rich and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, pierced to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and be a discerner of the thoughts and intents of everybody's heart sitting here tonight. All things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in your sight. You get an all-seeing eye and you see it all. Here we are, our lives are an open book. I want to speak to you a little while tonight on the subject of the five earths. Say it with me, five earths. Someone said, you mean the, the planet on which I'm sitting? Yeah, that's one of them. But let us go back to the beginning when uh, Jesus said that he saw Satan like lightning cast out of heaven. Saw him being cast down. So I guess Jesus just didn't show up at Mary's womb. He was from the beginning. He just hadn't left the throne. He just hadn't entered into uh, the womb and be brought forth flesh as a baby and grew up, suffered, bled, died, raised from the dead, and now he had a new dimension in his eternal body, glorified flesh and bone, new dimension. And to confess that Jesus comes in the flesh is the Spirit of God. And to confess, if you don't confess that Jesus came in the flesh, that's the spirit of Antichrist. Jesus came in the flesh. Thank God for Mary. She's not some fourth member of a Godhead, but thank God for Mary. Without her, we could not have Jesus to come in the flesh. Last night we learned from Luke that Jesus' grandfather was Eli. Hmm? Because Jesus did not have an earthly father. And they had to do the genealogy by the uh, grandfather, the generation past. Because God was his father. Hallelujah. And Joseph was his foster father, who, by the way, was the son of Jacob. And uh, Jesus, it said, was the son of Heli, or Old Testament Eli. Okay? And so we have this to look at today that Jesus was from the beginning. All things were made by him, and without him was nothing made that was made. Now, by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were made by him and for him, for he is the fullness of the Godhead bodily, the image of the invisible God, who alone 
dwelleth in immortality, dwelling in a light unto which no man can approach, whom no man hath seen nor can see. No man has seen God at any time. God's a spirit. God's invisible, and he fills the universe, and he's right here, and you can't see him. So how are you ever going to see him? You're going to have to see him in the face of Jesus Christ, who has a body like you have a body, and you can look at the body, see? By one spirit are you all baptized in the one body. There is one body and one spirit, even as you're called, and one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, of all, who's above all, through all, and in you all. Happy if you seek after him, you might just find him. Though he be not far from any one of us, in him we live and move and have our being. Reach out and get a big arm load of God. Amen. Amen. Now, he is the express image of the invisible God. Brightness of his glory, express image of his person. I just want you to know that he was from the beginning and he appeared all through the Old Testament, but not known as the name of Jesus yet. Didn't know his name yet. Nor did he have glorified flesh and bone yet. Because he hadn't come to earth and became flesh that he might have power over all principality. He has uh, disgraced the devil. He has uh, put down all principalities and spirits of wickedness in high places. He's defeated it and brought it to a screeching halt. You remember when he fought with uh, Michael for three weeks trying to get through to Daniel? How many remembers that one? Now why couldn't he just come right on in? Because uh, it was a fight because he hadn't come to earth. He hadn't become flesh. He hadn't bled, died, and resurrected and gained all power over the devil. I bet you he could try it now and have no problem at all. <laughs> Say hallelujah. All right, point. Jesus is from the beginning. Okay, now, there was nothing made without him. So when he spoke, it was the lips of God. If I, by the finger of God, cast out devils, how do your sons do it? Of course, the Pharisees' sons were not doing it, so it was egg on their face. But he claimed to have God's finger. So if he's got God's finger, he's got God's hand, God's arm, God's other arm, leg, torso, head, eyes, ears. He's the body of God. Now that's what you see when you get to heaven. All heaven's his throne. And the earth is his footstool. Aren't you glad that he didn't have a physical body that size? You'd be squashed because you're on the earth that I'm preaching about tonight, you earthlings. His foot would be 24,000 miles long, squishing you like a pancake. <laughs> But God is a spirit, and they who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Uh, yes. Now, you understand. All right, I'll leave that. The first earth was a perfect earth. Let, it, let us quote that again, Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Is God a perfect God? Is he a perfect creator? Would he make anything stupid or haphazard or uh, half-witted or half there? No, he's making a perfect earth. In the beginning, he made the earth. Now, the earth is made, okay? It's already there. He made the heaven and the earth. But all of a sudden, something happened to the perfect creation, and it became void. That is, it was canceled out. How many ever heard this before? One, two, three people, okay. Well, thank God I got a message of the hour for the rest of you. Perfect earth, it is now turned void. It's lost its form. What? God always has a form. I mean, he always has, he's organized. He knows what he's doing. He's got a system. He's got a set of laws. Void, no form, and darkness was on the face of the deep. Darkness? How could there be darkness in a perfect earth? There shouldn't be any darkness at all. 
because God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If you say you have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, you lie and do not the truth. But if you walk in the light or seize in the light, you have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse you from all sin. Now, if you say you've not sinned, you deceive yourself and the truth's not in you. But if you confess your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive you your sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you say you have not sinned, you make him a liar and his word's not in you. So, O oh, sinless ones, you never used to be sinless, but he made you righteous and forgave all your iniquities, blotting out the handwriting that was against you, that was contrary to you, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross, and triumphed over all principalities and made a show of them openly. <laughs> Open show. Okay, no form, void, cancel, dark, 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 what? Darkness is the absence of God. It's the absence of light, for God is light. All right, as this chaos continued, the Spirit of the Lord, for God is a spirit, began to move upon the face of the waters. Now, waters, that's why I say waters. Of all the cancellation and all the chaos and all the mess that was created and, uh, and occurred and happened, there was still water there. It was just water, 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 water everywhere. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and that's all that it said was left of the first perfect earth, okay? I just love it when the Spirit starts working on the water. Because when you get born again, you get born again of the water and the Spirit. The Spirit and the water is going to start working together to make a new creation out of you. That's why we usually have our tank over here, but the tank's over in the church tonight. And before this meeting's over, we're going to bury a bunch of you in a watery grave. You're coming out speaking in tongues when you could never speak in tongues before because that is the promise to everyone that's baptized in the Jesus Christ. Planted with Christ in baptism. Hallelujah. Okay. Spirit and water are working together. Aren't you glad you're born of the water and the spirit? Now, let me tell you about old Nick. Well, Nicodemus. What do you mean? Can I enter into my mother's womb again and be born again? Except a man be born again, he would not see the kingdom, Nicodemus. You believe it? Well, could you elaborate? Okay, you asked me. Two verses later. Except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom. Lot different. In one case, born again gets to see the kingdom. In the next case, born of the water and the spirit gets you to enter into the kingdom. I said the plot thickens. Hallelujah. Do you just want to see the kingdom? Or would you like to enter into the kingdom? There's a difference between seeing something and entering into something. Uh, you can see me get anointed and dance in the spirit here, but that don't mean you're going to enter into the same spirit of the dance with me. You're just seeing it. You haven't entered into it yet. Now the difference between seeing something and entering into it is the difference between being a spectator or a participator. And then there's a few other taters. Hallelujah. And so God said, let there be light. And for the first time since the perfect earth was destroyed, there was light. But only half the light, only 12 hours, because God knew that he was going to create man and you would have to sleep in the dark for 12 hours. Now in verse 9 he said, let the dry land appear out of the water. 
what do you mean? This chaotic earth had no dry land, no. It was buried by a flood, and what caused the flood, does anybody know? Why, the first earth was destroyed by a flood before Noah's flood. How many knew that there was a flood before Noah's flood? One, two, three. Well, it looks like we're going to have to get some sound doctrine going around here. Blessed are the people who know the joyful sound. They shall walk in the light of thy countenance, O oh my God. Every word of God is pure. It giveth understanding to the simple. Satan fell. Now you got the answer. He was flooded. What makes you think that the devil hates water so bad anyway, huh? Why does he hate the deep? Oh, don't send me into the deep. Uh, the deep is water, the ocean, the sea. There's no path through water to the happy hunting ground. Any Indian will tell you that. They believe in the great spirit. They just don't know his name. Don't send us into the deep, Jesus. It's the funniest thing. Every demon knew Jesus' name. They knew who he was. They knew he was the son of God. He was the holy one of God. And they were blabbing it all over the place. And Jesus said, shut up. I don't need your advertising. Hallelujah. And the people, his own disciples had no clue who he was, but all the devils knew who he was. Oh, my. Why does the devil hate water so bad? Because he can't go through dry places anymore if he goes into wet places. He was flooded in the beginning. That's what happened to the first earth. This is not the first earth that you're sitting on. And after we get done tonight, you will find out there will have been five earths in your eternal existence. This is exciting to learn these things. Hallelujah. Yep, he was flooded. They come bouncing back because Jesus now had 82 disciples. I said the 70 returned. Oh, if I was just in Jesus' day and he just would pick me to be one of the 12 disciples. <laughs> hey, God is adding to the church daily such that should be saved. And there's discipleship right here tonight if you want to just sign up for an application to follow Jesus. Come on, run home to mama. Not take your hand off the plow and turn back. Not go off and bury your daddy. Stick to your guns, and if you start it, finish it. It's not he that begins, it's he that finishes. He that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. Amen. Not he that starts, he that finishes. And so, Jesus, don't cast us into the deep and torment us before the time. Well, what difference does he make, you devils? Because time is irrelevant in the spirit world. It's eternal. There's no time there. There's no past, present, or future there. God tonight lives in past, present, and future all at the same time. That's why he told Daniel, for, Jesus talked to Daniel for three chapters, 10, 11, 12, told him everything that was going to happen in the end time and never stopped talking for three chapters. You could almost write the gospel according to Daniel. That was Old Testament. Learning something? All right, Jesus, so kind-hearted, what do you want to do? You don't want to go into the deep. Well, we want to go in the pigs. Say, okay, go in the pigs. Now the pigs were smarter than some people. They went and drowned with themselves rather than let the devil live in them. <laughs> and where did the pigs go? Right into the deep and choked. And so did them demons that could not come back to dry land anymore and wander around seeking rest, looking for seven more devils more wicked than themselves so they could return to the house that was cast out of and enter back in and the last state of that man be worse than the first. Got it? And so they, they don't want to do water because that's torment. And they want all the time they can get to do their dastardly deeds on earth. But tonight, we're not giving them any more time because we are in the end time anyhow. And beside, there is no time 
in eternity. So they're all going to the deep tonight. Say it with me. They're all going to the deep tonight. They're going to play possum on a few of you and lay low and try to hold the fort and hang in there because if the preacher spots them, they're a gone gosling. Hallelujah. Now you're hearing me. <laughs> oh, yeah. They think they're going to get by, but they're not. All right. I'm showing you now that the first earth was flooded because Satan fell, and the 70 came back. That's uh, beyond the 12. That's 82 disciples, and he's still looking for disciples tonight. Jesus, yes. We tread on scorpions and we stomped on serpents. We cast out devils and we raised the dead, we cleansed the leper and healed the sick. And oh, you ought to see them devils cast out. Oh, pooey, said Jesus. And that's nothing. I cast every devil there was out of heaven. And all you did was cast some devil on some big fat old guy. And you think you did something great? I saw Satan like lightning cast down. And that's when the first earth was destroyed in chaos. And the deep was everywhere because it was covered totally with water. And it wasn't until he recreated in the second earth that he said, let the dry land appear out of the water. Is that right? Now let's go back to Peter's text tonight. You think Peter knew what he was talking about? When he said, this they willingly are ignorant of. You know, it's a bad thing to be an ignoramus. But it's a worse thing to be willing to be an ignoramus. And you don't have to be ignorant. For the days of this ignorance, God winked at it, and now it commands all men to repent. Open up the book and study it, and you'll be ignorant no more. Hallelujah. Find hidden treasure. Read your Bible. And now, this they willingly were ignorant of, that by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and that was true, and the earth standing out of the water, Seven continents emergent, second earth, out of the water and in the water. Get it? Now, here's the next verse. I don't, it's just the way that the, the Hebrew language goes, I guess, but we're working backwards here. The next verse said, Peter said, whereby the world that there was, that's the one before the one that had the water, the earth standing out of the water and in the water. You got it? All right. The world that then was perished. Now, if you don't believe what I preach tonight about the first earth perishing, take Peter's word for it. He said, whereby the world that then was perished, perished, but the next earth, the earth was standing out of the water and in the water. That's when God recreated the world in Genesis chapter 1. Now we have the second earth, the one that is three-quarters water and one-quarter dry land. It is half dark and half light that has all its vegetation being reproduced by its seed within itself and reproducing after its kind. Say, after its kind, and its seed is within itself. You know how important that is to understand that? Everything God ever created, that's how he did it in the second earth. Trees, herbs, cattle, man, every living thing has to reproduce after its kind. And his seed is within his cell. Now, of course, we know that a giraffe reproduces a hippopotamus. 
Is that true? Well, well, then what does a giraffe reproduce? Oh, you mean it reproduces after its kind? Oh, I get it. Now, if it does, where is the seed of the giraffe? Hanging on the oak tree in the woods? In the body of the giraffe? The seeds within itself? Every human being has a right to reproduce themselves because they're going to die someday. And you just want to hope you get the right mate to do that. And if you don't, it's your own tough luck because you're the one that made the choice. Too bad how sad your dad. You just go ahead and live with it. It was your choice. Say hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Okay, why am I telling you this? Because it works the same way in the spirit world. You want the gift of healing in your ministry? Sit under the gift of healing. And when the gift fills the air, flows throughout the atmosphere, fills the tent, and starts to operate because... Don't look at me. I couldn't heal if I have a headache. I only pray for people. I know that when they get healed, God gets the glory. And I know when they don't get healed, I get the blame. I know that. That's the way it works. It has to work that way. I saw unprofitable servants down here. That gift fills the whole tent. And while it's moving, <laughs> It drops a seed from within itself. And if you're fertile and open and your cycle is on and your spirit is uh, uh, on key, your spirit is right in the right groove. If you're, if you're just at the right moment, that seed is going to grab a hold of your human spirit and impregnate your soul. That seed is going to grow and grow. Embryo, dimension, birth. Oh, God, oh, 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 this is killing me. Yeah, but as soon as you birth it, society has seen your baby again. For the first time, you have operated a gift, and the world has seen it. It's out into the world now. Now, it's not a very big thing. It's just a bawling, squalling, yawling little runt. But the older it gets and the more you spank it, I mean, the more you feed it, and the more you correct it, and the more you teach it, the bigger it gets and the more it can do. And then it's an extension of yourself. It's like your son or your daughter. Is this me? No, this ain't me. Yeah, it is. No. What is this out here doing this? Well, it's just an extension of yourself. You're beside yourself, Paul. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay, you get the picture now. How did you get that? You did not get that gift of healing by sitting under tongues. You did not get that gift of healing by sitting under prophecy. You got it by sitting under healing, which is reproduced after its kind, and its seed is within itself. Got it? Now, you folks ain't got any trouble talking in tongues. You know why? You go to a tongue-talking church. You've sit under it for years. It's no wonder you can speak in tongues. But if you ain't never been around the work of the miracles, you're never going to work them until you sit under the gift which fills the air, drops the seed from within itself and reproduces after its kind. Is that too heavy for you? Now you know why a lot of preachers will threaten great supernatural wonders and nothing ever happens. It's a calf stared at a new gate, like a neutered mule. Well, any minute now, God's going to do something any minute. We'll come back tomorrow night. Uh, here's a classic cop out at the end of their ministry or at some point. Everybody pray for everybody else. That'll get me off the hook 
and I won't have to operate. Oh, I'm acid. All right, mean or what? All you got to do is humble your little old torso. Go sit under a gift until it drops in your spirit and you reproduce after its kind because its seed is within itself. And the next thing you know, you will be operating the same gift because God wants to extend the next generation, the next uh, ministry, the next period of time. He wants the church to roll on, you see. I don't care who it was in the Bible. If he ever mounted anything, he sat under another ministry. He sat under another man, also the Bible. It's the same way with authority. Bless God, I'm not going to come under nobody's authority. Well, God bless you. No one's ever going to listen to you either. <laughs> you ain't never going to have authority because you ain't got the sense to go sit under it. But if you went and sat under authority, next thing you know, if authority would be reproducing after its kind, for its seed is within itself. And then you might just whisper, and somebody would jump six feet and run into it. As opposed to yap, 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 and in one ear and out the other, and no one's paying a lick of attention to you. I told you I was acid. Say hallelujah. You want to hear the rest of this, or you got a belly full? You want to know what earth you're living on? I'd better at least let you know what earth you're living on here. Uh, earth calling the saints. Okay. First earth perished. Second earth was recreated, and we got half the light. We got 25% of dry land because if we had all dry land, every nation would have killed each other by now. But the oceans separated them throughout the centuries. Got it? And now this was the earth that Noah inherited. Violence was everywhere, kind of like it is in 2020. Wickedness was everywhere. And God said, I am going to destroy mankind. Now, Noah, I know you're 480 years old. And I'm going to tell you that in 120 years, that's the last day that any man's going to have on my second earth, 120 years. Do you know it's been 120 years since the first person got the Holy Ghost in the United States of America in Wichita, Kansas, New Year's Eve, 1900? We were there this past fall. We went to the foundation of the old church and pulled a brick out. The Catholics own the property now. and I met the priest and I, he had broke his arm. I said, uh, I pray for the sick. You want me to pray for your arm? See, I'll pray for anybody. I'll even go and pray for anybody's denomination. You ought to see all the colored cards in my pocket. Must be 15 or 20 of them all different colors. I'm joking. Hallelujah. God healed his arm. Can I do anything for you? I, I take me to Charles Parnham's house there to, to the foundation. And while we went in, we took the brick, and I, he said, well, I'll give you that brick for a uh, relic. I said, well, I'll take it for a souvenir. I'll be there. And I got it on the bus right over here, a brick out of the foundation of the first house where the first person ever spoke in tongues in the United States of America. Now, Brother Freddie, don't go getting puffed up. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo, yes, Lord. 120 years it's been since that girl spoke with tongues on New Year's Eve. It's 2020. 120 years from 1900. What do you think about that? I don't have time. One of these nights I'm going to tell you about all the departures that's occurred since 1900 until now for these 12 
decades, but not tonight. I'm going to keep you in suspense. But rest, rest assured, we've had nothing but departures in every decade. Lost this, lost that, lost something else. So here we go. And uh, sure enough, when he was 600 years old, God sent a flood and destroyed every human being on the second earth. Now when the flood was over and Noah stepped out on the new earth, the earth had not perished. It had just been drowned. The floods went back. And there, everything was different. If you drank grape juice, you'd get drunk. You could only live to be 70 years old, three score and ten. So some of the first patriarchs made it to about 150 or 60. <sighs> Everything was different. The atmosphere had dumped water. It was now 15 pounds per square inch, so there's no more dinosaurs. It takes a lot of pressure to make big things. You want a big miracle tonight? Come on, pressure me. Put some pressure on me. We want things to grow big. The firmament had been evaporated. That's the earth you're sitting on. Peter's earth. Your earth. Long story short, when the church is caught away to meet Jesus in the clouds, we get on a white horse army and come back and stop the battle of Armageddon. And the earth, Peter said, which is all burnt up. Oh, the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord. Yeah, you don't know about the day of the Lord. It's a day of trouble, grief, darkness, gloom, fire. The heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are reserved on the fire against the day of judgment and perdition upon godly men. Now, the earth's been baptized twice in water. Okay, I'm sure that she must have got baptized right after a while. It's only going to be burnt one time with fire. But now it's had its water and spirit. That is, it's had its flood and fire. Jesus steps off the horse. Descends, his foot touches the Mount of Olives, the earth's surface splits and changes. Overnight, the earth, which is burnt to a crisp, and everything in it is gone up in smoke. Overnight, vegetation shoots up, living waters flow out of Jerusalem. We have a millennial earth, earth number four. How many can hardly wait for the new earth? Well, the millennial earth is not the new earth. The new earth is the fifth earth found in Revelation chapter 20. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth after the millennial reign of Christ upon the earth. And I saw the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven on the new earth prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. But I digress. I get ahead of myself. That's the fifth earth. That's when the new Jerusalem comes down from heaven and sits on the new earth. Even the millennial earth ain't good enough for the new Jerusalem. But it's going to be good. Because you and me, the saints, are going to rule the world for a thousand years. Say amen. And we shall rule them as with a rod of iron and break them as a potter with a vessel of shivers. That's what Jesus is going to do. We'll do it with a glorified body. They can't kill you when you have a glorified body. They can't stop you. Lord, I wish I had one right now. I'd be in Washington, D.C. Don't think I wouldn't be cleaning the house. But i got to wait for Jesus. I can't steal his thunder. My horse is just a little bit behind his horse. But they're both white horses. <laughs> oh, yes, Lord. A baby dies at 100 years old. An old man lives to be 1,000 again on the millennial earth. Lion lays down of the lamb, eats straw like an ox, 
spiders and scorpions don't sting. Oh, hallelujah. What a wonderful earth it's going to be very soon. But nothing like the new earth, which has no more sea. There's going to be room for everybody on the new earth. Uh, there won't be enough room for me, though, because you see these stars on my crown? These are deeds to the stars that I earn by winning souls. For the equation reads, one planet equals more than one soul. Or one soul equals more than one planet. What shall it gain a man if he gain the whole world and lost his soul? The soul is more valuable than the planet. That's why will there be any stars in my crown? May they be wise, you shine as the brightness of the firmament. May they turn in many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. What I'm trying to tell you is I won't be spending a lot of time on the new earth because I'll be moving at the speed of thought, which is faster than the speed of light. From planet to planet, world to world, star to star, taking care of my property. So I'll be having interviews and holding uh, application uh, at my mansion. I want you to come down to my mansion. Uh, I've got a lot of work for a lot of you folks to do. I need all the help I can get taking care of all these planets. Am I stretching your arm too hard in the synagogue today? No sting them, no cure them. You need a good stretching. Your faith needs stretching. Your imagination needs stretching. God's a lot bigger than you could ever think. Eyes not seen, ears not heard. It's never entered into the heart of man. The things that God's got prepared for them that love him. So I conclude tonight on my little uh, dissertation on the five earths. First one perished. The second one was flooded. The third one was changed. The fourth one was just a little heaven to go to heaven in. But wait till you see the new one. Well, you won't see me too often because I'll be in all the mother worlds working. By whom he also made the world with an S. Amen. There's the five verse. I hope that you were blessed tonight with the word of God. All right, I must be the heat. I've been kind of overwhelmed here the last few minutes with so much to do. But I'm catching my breath. I see what I'm going to have to do tonight. I'm going to have to use the healing chair early. Okay? Before we do that, let's receive the offering for tonight. And uh, that way, after you get healed, I know you'll probably head to the house. Then it'll be too late to get an offering. Uh, you're learning a lot of things.